during our discussion of frequency selective circuits, we've seen how these circuits will allow signals or voltages that are oscillating at certain frequencies to pass through the filter, but that the filter then attenuates, significantly attenuates frequencies um, at other parts of the spectrum. We've described or discussed what we've referred to as the band pass or the pass band and the stop band of a filter. We now want to formally define what we mean by the band pass or the, the pass band and the stop band. In this low pass filter here, we've claimed that signals that fall or oscillate within frequencies below this frequency are passed and call that the stop band. We're going to call this point there, that frequency, the cutoff frequency. And we're going to define the cutoff frequency as being the frequency where the magnitude of this frequency response function is equal to 0.707 or 1 over the square root of 2 times the maximum value of the function. So for a low pass filter, the maximum value of the function occurs at DC or omega equals 0. And in this case, the maximum value is 1. So again, the cutoff frequency is a defined as that frequency where the magnitude of this function is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. And we're going to say that or that's the components that oscillate at frequencies less than the cutoff frequency will be passed through the filter, and those um, components that are oscillating at frequencies higher than that will said to fall, be said to fall in the stop band and will be attenuated significantly. So let's go back and now calculate what that cutoff frequency is by starting first with the magnitude of the frequency response function, the magnitude of h of j omega. You'll recall that for the low pass RL filter, that was equal to R over L divided by the square root of omega squared plus R over L squared. So that's the magnitude. We want to set that equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times h max. And the value of omega that satisfies this then will be our cutoff frequency. We've already pointed out that for this filter, h max equals 1. So let's continue now with our derivation of omega sub c by squaring both sides of the equation. And when we do so, we get r over l quantity squared divided by omega squared plus r over l squared equals 1 half. Now clear the denominators by multiplying both sides by 2 and both sides by omega squared plus r over l squared and we get then 2 r over l squared is equal to omega squared plus r over l squared. Subtracting r over l squared from each side, we get 2 minus 1 is 1, r over l squared is equal to omega squared, or taking the square root of both sides, we then have that omega c, the cutoff frequency, is simply equal to the ratio of the resistance to the inductance. If you'll recall, the transfer function for this filter was h of s equaled r over l divided by s plus r over l. At the time we derived this, we said that if we get it into this form, that constant has a significant meaning. We now see that that constant is just the cutoff frequency, and so the transfer function in its standard form then can be written as omega sub c over s plus omega sub c. Now, let's look at the phase part of the frequency response function and evaluate the phase term at the cutoff frequency, or theta of j omega sub c is, well, you'll recall that theta of j omega was equal to negative the arctangent of omega over 
R over L. So let's now replace omega with omega sub C, the cutoff frequency, and when we do so, we get then that the phase term is equal to negative the arc tangent of omega at uh, the cutoff frequency is R over L, divided by R over L. Well, that's just the arc tangent of 1. Of course, the arc tangent of 1 is 45 degrees. So we find then that the, um, or at the cutoff frequency, the phase term then is equal to negative 45 degrees. Now let's look at the four standard filter types and describe the cutoff frequencies there. We've already talked about the low pass filter and saw that the passband then was defined as this range of frequencies and that at the cutoff frequency the transfer function equaled 0.707 times its maximum value. We can go through the same process with the other three types of functions and again we'll come up with a cutoff frequency. In the high pass filter the cutoff frequency describes the delineation between the stop band, which is lower frequencies in the high pass filter, and then the pass band starts at the cutoff frequency and goes on forever, I guess. This filter here is the, or this frequency response, is the frequency response of a band pass filter. A band pass filter is a filter that passes a certain band of frequencies and attenuates the rest. Its center frequency is known as omega naught. And once again, the cutoff frequencies, of which there are two, are defined as the frequencies for which the magnitude of the frequency response function is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times the maximum value. In this filter, the maximum value is 1. So once again, the cutoff frequencies are found by setting the magnitude of the frequency response to 1 over the square root of 2 and solving for the cutoff frequencies. This filter is known as a band reject or a notch filter. In this type of filter, it rejects a certain range of frequencies and passes all of the rest. And so the stop band for this is relatively narrow and again defined by the two cutoff frequencies where the magnitude of the frequency response function is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times the maximum value. For this filter, the maximum value is 1. So again, the cutoff frequencies can be found by setting the magnitude of the frequency response function to 1 over the square root of 2 and solving for omega sub c.